Hello and Namaste, my name is Nadi Nagori and welcome back to my channel. Now today's topic is very special because this is something that I did not think could be a career option for me back in the days when I was starting off as a chartered accountant. I actually did not think that I could do this even as a finance professional because this was something that was completely off my radar. But we are here to change that narrative through my YouTube channel and I'm going to do that not just for finance but for as many fields as possible. So today's topic is consulting and we're going to be talking with Vasa. Vasa has a decade worth of experience uh, of working across countries. He's been to multiple countries. He's worked with the big names like PwC and Ernst & Young in their consulting department and his primary focus is strategy and m &A. So we're going to take all this more than a decade worth of golden experience that Vasa has Put it all in this video and share it with you so that you get an idea about what this field is about, how can you have a career in it, and how can you grow and successfully expand your own professional horizons. There are a lot of perks, but there's also a lot of cost that comes with it. And who better than somebody like Vasa to guide us through. As always, before we get into the video, do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up down below. It really boosts up my confidence. Let me know in the comments below, would you like to see something else related to consulting? I am trying to do a deep dive into the different kinds of fields that's available, whether it's consulting, whether it's investment banking. So let me know if you'd like to see any of those or anything else that you want on my channel. Please share this video with a friend who's considering consulting as a career option. And without much further ado, now let's go and straight up learn what consulting is from our expert. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Nidhi. It's so wonderful, you know, reaching out to people and especially the young kids, you know, to explain them what they want to do in life. And it's important to get a wider perspective of what consulting is and what strategy and M&A is. So, uh, you know, I've spent a, about a decade now in consulting, uh, largely focusing on strategy and M&A. I've worked across developed and emerging economies like I've you know, been uh, you know, of course, Canada and India, but I've also been to Africa, uh, Middle East and Southeast Asia, working on market entry, growth and diversification strategies, uh, working with both private corporations and governments. Uh, right. So that's that's been my experience, hardcore you know, strategy and uh, uh, M&As. Mm -hmm. That is that is fantastic. I mean, a decade worth of experience and that too. Um, such a global and vast experience that you've had. So we're very excited to start learning on this. So I'm going to shoot straight into the video and I'm going to ask you first question. What really is consulting? Now, I've heard this word so many times, but I don't really understand what it is, what work it entails and, and what is it that you do in a very layman language? Oh. Um, have you ever tried to lift yourself uh, being inside a bucket, Nili? No. No. Uh, okay, I tried that in college, uh, you know, because my physics professor wanted to explain some, some laws, uh, Newton laws. And I tried that and I just couldn't lift myself. Hmm. Uh, right? Because Newton's laws say that you need an external force to create some kind of motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something is exactly like that. You have an organization who wants to go from place A to B and they cannot do it at times being inside that bucket you need an external force to move it along and that's what consulting does it's an external advising firm uh, mm. giving it energy and momentum to take it to a different to a direction hmm. that sounds extremely interesting uh, so how is consulting divided like does it have various fields um, and what is strategy what is m and uh, what are all of these? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, this consulting industry, if you look at it, uh, uh, any external firm advising a company is a consultant, right? So it could mm -hmm. be business strategy. Uh, if a company wants to go from, say, $100 million to $500 million, how do they do it? Right, so that's mm -hmm. business strategy. Uh, the second is, uh, you know, technology consulting because uh, to move from 100 to 500 million dollars, you need to, you may do a lot of acquisitions and you have to integrate a lot of firms. Mm -hmm. You want to uh, utilize your resources for poor thinking. So you, you enable it with technology. So that's technology consulting. Uh, right then, of course, there is M&A advisory, which are the kinds of firms that you uh, acquire. Uh, how do you go about it? What's the valuation and so on? So that's that's M and A advisory. 
and then you know you have legal consulting you have forensic due diligence so there are various fields uh, of uh, consulting and of course operations consulting is one area where you focus more on cost and optimization and productivity improvement and so on but broadly i i, I have worked a lot on uh, you know, business strategy and m and and a little bit of uh, post-merger integration operations consulting. So that's where I focus on. And of course, technology, you can't live without technology. Right, right. Oh my God, that just like, just sounds so interesting to me. Uh, and of course, the fact that it is very novel to me and to most of our audience, I'm sure it's going to, you know, um, get a lot more exciting as we go along. Okay. So how do you think one can start off in a field like this? Because how did you start off and and how do you start thinking or planning for a career in strategy right from what kind of a qualification you should go for um to you know what kind of an internship you should look for jobs how would you sort of lay a roadmap for people okay i think uh, you know the first and the most important thing for any person is to know what it entails right what exactly is uh, consulting like depending on your profession like are you getting into legal consulting or technology consulting or strategy consulting and the first thing is to know what it entails so what it entails means you know there are the good part of it like you you get to travel a lot uh, you get to meet with the brightest minds on this planet uh, you you are uh, constantly thinking and you get that solution oriented approach so there's a good part of it but there is something that comes along with it and as a consultant uh, you know uh, you should know whether you are able to do it you know that forbearance is very important are you willing to travel as much and stay away from family mm -hmm. right are you mentally mm -hmm. prepared for that you have to work for 15 16 hours at times are you mentally prepared for that it is rewarding no doubt about it but you should know what it entails so I give an example of a coin to somebody who is new, right? Uh, there is a head and a tail, right? The head may be considered as a good part and tail is something that may not be that attractive. But when you are getting into consulting you and you want a coin, you pick the whole coin. You can't say, I only want the goody goody part and I don't want this, right? So that's the first important thing. You know, you need to know what it entails. Hmm. Right. The second uh, very important aspect is to know what it takes to be successful in that field. Right. And success means, uh, you know, not just to get an admission into a consulting company. Right. For, for, mm -hmm. for engineers, for, for graduates, I think that something of fresh out of MBA, but you need to know what it means to be successful. So as you move from an analyst and associate to a manager, or to a director, to a partner, there are different skill sets that are required, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So either you have that at day one, I mean, yeah. nobody has that. There are few exceptions who have all those skills, but then you should be mentally prepared to learn that those skills along the lines, right? Mm -hmm. That's a very, very important skill, right? Yeah. When you are fresh out of college, you need to do analysis. You know, you, should, you, 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 have, you need to spend a lot of hours, give an error a free output. But when you become a partner, you need to get business, right? Uh, so over the time, you need to manage your team, your interpersonal relationship, and then creating a point of view. But if somebody says that, oh, I don't want to get into this, I, I don't like selling, right? Either he has to cultivate that interest or, mm. or he said, okay, this is not the right field for me. Or say that, okay, three to five years, that's the time that I'm going to spend into consulting. So you should know that what are the skill sets that are required. So have that preparation uh, very early. And the third thing, uh, you know, you need to know the exit options also in consulting, uh, right? At different stages, you can exit. You know, zero to three years is where most people exit. Uh, then you know, five to eight is another bracket and then 10 plus. So at different stages, if you exit, you get different benefits. So you need to have the forbearance to bear it. So if, uh, for say five years or 10 years, uh, right? So that those exit points at different levels are very important, uh, which will take you to, uh, you know, a, a CEO level or maybe head of corporate strategy or something like that, right? So, uh, you know, if you do say X number of years plus X plus two, that won't give you anything more. So then the next exit point is X plus five and you really get to benefit a lot more. Mm -hmm. 
So are you willing to bear that? I think that's an important uh, element that you need to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the other thing is you need to plan your own personal journey. I think that's a very important thing because your priorities change at different stages in life, uh, right? And then you have a consulting career, which is like a typical good firm, two, three, two, three years at a level, uh, and, and you keep moving up. So try to match your own personal career with this. Uh, so, uh, and if you see, um, you know, your your personal life, it, if it's it, it is it is likely to be affected based on the plan you char- mm-hmm. chart out. Mm-hmm. Then you need to prioritize and deprioritize. You know what you want, whether you want uh, A versus B, a bigger firm versus the smaller firm. So all mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Uh, that is something that you should spend uh, some time thinking about. And you evaluate every three years. It's not that you're done. Uh, okay and you're done for life. Uh, yeah. Consulting yeah. is one area where every three years you do evaluate what is it that you want to do next in life. So you need to uh, keep that in mind. That's mm-hmm. at a very broad level, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You need to know. Okay, and how do you know it? You talk to a lot of professionals who have done it or you know some successful people and not so successful people. Uh, mm-hmm. I know partners who know how to manage their work-life balance and they are fantastic. There are some people who have not been able to do so. You need to talk to a balanced set of people to get a perspective on what it is. And then you need to speak to people across uh, the top firms like Strategy and uh, McKinsey, PwC and so on. So, right, and EY. Mm-hmm. Right. So you talk to those people and then, you know, smaller firms or focused firms, I would say. So get 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 a perspective on what it entails and networking. I think networking is very important. Nobody better than you know how important networking is. Right. So you need to network with partners and firms so that you know you stay in touch with them. That helps yeah. you get in. Okay. This is a, you know, I mean, I'm so glad that you spoke about your personal career along with professional career. I do think that we miss out on that when we're young, you know, we're also impatient and we sort of miss out on, I don't know, there's this aura about uh, investment banking and m and and strategy and everybody wants to do it. And I just feel like, you know, we sort of miss out on the, the fact that our personal interests have to align with it and the fact that they change. I mean, you are not going to have the interest that you have today. You're not going to have it three years later. So thank you so much for stressing upon that, how important that is. Um, so I'm I'm talking about your, about your personal career here now. So how important is an MBA to get into this field right now? Uh, you started off at a different time. So how do you think should one approach it? Like, should they go and get an MBA? Should they uh, first maybe try? Our, like you said, you know, there are certain colleges that company A goes to to um, hire. Do you think graduates can also get in maybe into an just an entry position and figure it out if it's for them? If you are a graduate, you you enter at level one, right? Hmm. If you are an MBA, you enter at level two or three, depending on the tiering of college, right? So uh, you know, uh, there are a few people. Who say that I don't know what consulting is? Hmm. I want to experiment and see that hmm. is this a good life, yeah. uh, right? And it's also high paying, right? So many there are a few people fresh out of uh, you know their graduation they join consulting firms, hmm. uh, right? They tried for two three years and they decide whether to stay in consulting or uh, get into private equity or investment banking or get into corporate, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, the second is MBAs. As I said, they get, uh, you know, uh, they join the organization at level one or level two, uh, uh, higher than what uh, a fresh graduate would do. So there are two entry points. Mm-hmm. Uh, but saying so, I would say an MBA is important uh, mm-hmm. to get, uh, you know, to do well here. MBA or if you're a chartered account, you know, you're a CPA or so on, whatever profession, you know, highest degree in that profession, okay. uh, that is important. And, mm. and and for two reasons, one is uh, you definitely spend more time learning, right? Mm-hmm. So you are better off, uh, and you meet a lot of people. Your network becomes stronger, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the second thing is uh, in terms of the, the the tutor mindset. When you are in engineering, uh, the professors teach you in a different way so that you get. Uh, the technical skills or if you are a CPA you know the focus is more on getting into accounting and so on right when you're an MBA the mindset of the tutor is different 
uh, right the person who trains so accordingly that gets into you so your mindset also changes and i think mba does that the transformation in mindset some people even at graduate level have that kind of a uh, you know uh, mental uh, you know, uh, acumen i would say they are able to do well mm-hmm. but saying so i think uh, you know uh, depending on where you are in your career to i think mba definitely helps but yeah. if you get a chance to get into consulting at, uh, immediately after graduation you mm-hmm. should mm-hmm. Uh, but mba will help you grow so mba is something that you may have to do 9 out of 10 times you need to keep in mind okay that. okay um and then because you mentioned that um you know cas and cpas also get a chance i'm very interested because this is where i come from so do you see a lot of because you you're you have a science background uh yeah engineering I'm, background right so yeah. you're basically doing finance uh and do you see a lot of cas and cpas getting into consulting are they valued or is there an expectation that hey no go get an mba first and then we'll consider um you know taking you in yes so earlier there was a lot of bias towards mbas mm-hmm. okay and there still is a lot of bias towards mbas mm-hmm. for obvious reasons uh right because uh, you know it is not just about financial acumen uh, yeah. it's about the, the the business mindset uh right uh, more of reading and more of uh, you know analysis so uh, it's uh, uh, it's believed that people who have spent a lot of time you know working on math and analytical skills and logic they are better to do that but saying so uh, you know i have seen that in the recent past a lot of cpas have joined uh, the organization uh, you know ca and cps and i, I know a, a, a ca who is a partner you know the top tier consulting firm all mm-hmm. uh, right so that's also possible and that is done uh the only thing is if you you shouldn't get caught with the the accounting mindset at time right yeah. that is something that sh- you should let go of and when i say that uh you know when you are a ca uh and you want to get the lhs equal to uh, rhs right yeah uh right so when you when you want to get that done you focus on say multiple digits after the decimal right when you come to mba you focus on the, the other side right mm-hmm. the, the bigger picture right so if you are able to get that mindset work around it you can still manage but i've mm-hmm. seen like most people uh, you know the mba the mindset changes and i've seen that transformation in a lot of people mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. No thank you I'm just so glad that the field is now more open yes that way at least when people are done with their CA CPA they can maybe go in see if it's for them and then consider Okay um so you've worked in so so you know what so you've worked in India you've lived in India and worked here you've lived in Canada and you've worked here and you also have the experience of working across economies So I'm just curious how is this field when it when you compare it to a developing country and you compare it to a developed country is it something that's fluid uh, do you think that this is a field that still is um, going to give global mobility opportunities to professionals who pick it up So the question around you know uh, working across uh, economies mm-hmm. right so uh, see uh, as a consultant if you have that right kind of training the framework you know capability driven strategies and so on you know that you can apply from place a to place b right mm-hmm. what what changes is two things one is the uh, the problem statement what i mean by problem statement is right uh, in emerging economies you talk a lot more about growth mm-hmm. right in developed economy cost is an important consideration Mm. Uh, right so we we talk about cost optimization and so on and transformation and things like that right so the the, the problem statement uh, there is different uh the the second thing is the way you have access to data right i've been to places um, you know like nigeria uh where data a- 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 availability is a big 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 challenge uh, right uh but when it comes to developed economies i mean they have everything set and i'll give you an example of my post merger integration project i did between a canadian entity and an indian entity mm-hmm. all right uh so in india we spent some time uh you know creating templates so that they can collect data so for 8 weeks we let them collect data 
And in the meanwhile, we went to Canada where they already had the data and we did uh, the analysis, mm -hmm. right? So in terms of the d data availability uh, and in terms of templatization, that varies. Of course, it varies to the organization. There are many organizations in emerging markets that have done well. Uh, right, but the way uh, to go about it, you know, after you get the data, you do the same analysis. Uh, you have to speak to the client to understand what they need. Uh, right, uh, people, uh, you know, you need to work with a lot of uh, people, and people have similar set of needs and requirements, and you need to know how you need to manage people to get that done. Right, so those yeah. things you need to value and respect them. So those things are co common. But the problem statements and the data availability, you know, those those things vary. So you need to be creative. You need to be creative in mm -hmm. how you are going to solve a problem, how you are going to work with the variables. Those things definitely vary, vary with an organization. And the other important aspect, the third aspect is uh, your ability to work with different cultures. All right. I think that is an important uh, element. Uh, that's that that uh, you know one should have access to right when I was in Indonesia the people there are different Nigeria people there are different Canada people are different Middle East so everywhere the people are very different so you need to understand how different they are and then accordingly uh, take care and manage uh, the situation so if you know that these are the differences mm -hmm. and that you work on them very very consciously mm -hmm. uh, and you are able to sail through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of struggles that I think the, the, the young me did not see. The young me would have seen this as something, oh, this is so exciting. So what, what do you think is that one, you know, a caution um, tip that you'd like to give somebody who's watching it, somebody who's young and probably thinking, oh, this is excellent. Uh, you know, you get to travel, there's a lot of perks, you, of course, you're very well paid. Um, what is it that you want to tell them in terms of Hey, like think about this too. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a very very important question, uh, and that's the reason why consultants every three years they think whether they want to stay into consult in consulting or not, right? Because uh, priorities change and the demands are uh, immense. Uh, but as you said, you know the perks and the fascinating aspects they really uh, attract you. I think. Uh, one thing uh, that uh, you know that the struggle uh, that's there is managing your professional and personal life, uh, right? That's that's the biggest challenge. So if you are able to manage and do that, uh, that uh, is you know that's that's dependent also, right, on uh, who your partner is, your relation. Uh, shifts in different stages of our life. Partner means I'm talking about the life partner. I've been very yeah. lucky. She's, uh, uh, you know, she has been very, very supportive. Uh, even my child, uh, you know, it's just four and a half now, but uh, still, he is also very understanding. Uh, you know, he understands uh, that I need to travel. So, getting a right partner, uh, you know, uh, that is one of the most important things. And I, I'll tell you, trust me, uh, that really matters a lot after a while. Right. Oh, I, I keep telling people this is the biggest career decision you're going to make. So take time and think about it and don't just jump into it. So no, to that point, I'm so glad that you found a partner like that. So uh, I do want to know what is that one advice that you'd want to give any young student who's watching this, any young professional watching this, thinking, hey, I want to get into uh, m &A at some point and I want to have that life, uh, you know, that we see you having, where we, we see you traveling to all these wonderful countries, sitting with the best minds. Uh, what is your advice to them? I think uh, I would say a few, not just one. I think uh, one is know know what it entails. What consulting is at different stages of life. Second is know what you want uh, in different stages of life, right? And see whether you know the visions are aligned. Whether you're able to move along because it, it's a, getting into an organization, getting into a field is is getting into a relationship, right? It's like uh, two, two, two lines, uh, uh, consider two parallel lines moving towards a common goal, right? If the vision is aligned, then you will continue moving along. Uh, but if, if your goals are different from the organization goals and then you hit along and then you move away, right? So I think these, these, this is very important. You need to know what you're getting into uh, and uh, you need to know what you really want. So knowing yourself, I believe is, is the most important thing. 
the other thing is learning right it's not that your learning ends after engineering or mba or something like that uh, consulting is so diverse uh, that uh, every every project you know at least for the first 15 20 30 projects that you do that's different uh, so sometimes so you need to learn learn quickly and advise people in the organization who have been there for 20 30 years right so that's that's a, another level of challenge altogether so you are telling something uh, you have, have to tell something more because you're charging up i think so continuous learning uh, if you you need to have that effect of a mindset as well okay okay wonderful uh, this has been great vas i really appreciate it guys i'm dropping his linkedin link below of course follow him connect with him but do know that he is very busy as you can see so he's going to respond at his uh, own convenience we do appreciate your time today um the one thing that i have taken away from this is that i used to think that this is a very elite field of uh, that you know i need to have a certain education and a certain um i'd say status in terms of how i look or appearance or confidence level etc um but talking to you it makes me feel that this is something that we can work on it's a work in progress and uh, we can you know i i wish i'd known it 10 years back who knew i'd have probably have a different career so i'm so glad you shared this insight with us cuz i'm pretty sure it's going to uh, impact the decisions that many who watch this video will take thank you thank you so much nidhi uh, for giving me this opportunity to reach out to people to people because i believe i think what helped me was uh, you know when i was fresh out of graduate or i was planning to get into consulting talking to people i think that really helped me because uh, you can build your analytical skills but knowing what goes inside the field uh, that is something that somebody who has yeah. lived and spent some time there can do so thank you for giving me this opportunity and continue with the great work that you're doing thank you i really appreciate it thank you so much and thanks guys for watching the video take care um stay safe Bye bye Vasa bye bye bye